This lecture is about voltage regulation, which basically talks about how constant this stays at its value, which is V2, how constant this load voltage V2 stays uh, close to its value. So voltage regulation is measured as uh, voltage V2 at no load minus uh, the same voltage uh, V2 at uh, full load, uh, and it's a percent, so uh, again V2 at full load times 100 percent and this has to be a very small value for a system to run uh, well so it's expected that this has to be as small as possible so for voltage regulation as you can say that we are talking about no load and full load uh, 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 values uh, full load basic uh, sorry uh, no load which is v2 is basically your uh, rated voltage so anyways you know this number uh, uh, from its uh, ratings uh, for full load uh, we will uh, work with the transformer equivalent circuit which is uh, uh, good for full load conditions and if you go back to our previous lecture so for full load conditions your i2 is is uh, large and in that case you can uh, ignore ie which is the excitation branch crunch so that means you can uh, uh, ignore this branch so that means you can use a simplified equivalent circuit which has only R E and X E. Okay, so uh, simplified equivalent circuit for full load conditions, uh, you can use that for finding the voltage regulation. So voltage regulation under no load minus V2 under full load divided by V2 full load is going to be calculated from here. So this is your V2. Uh, so you're expecting that your V2 has to be very close to um, V1 uh, prime in here. So this whole circuit is referred to secondary side. So your V1 over A is basically going to be V2 plus any drop in here, and you're expecting that the drop has to be as small as possible. In case of an ideal transformer, this voltage V2 is going to be equal to V1 over A. Uh, second concept is the transformer efficiency. So for finding transformer efficiency, you need the complete equivalent circuit, and here is the complete equivalent circuit with both branches, the series branch as well as the as well as the shunt branch and you know that your efficiency is basically given by your output power divided by input power okay and uh, you can say that your input power is given by the output power plus losses and what kind of losses we have we have the core losses and we have the copper losses which are also called i square r losses so this is going to be based on rc and this is going to be based on re uh, now, based on this circuit in here, uh, so your P-core, which is going to be based on RC in here, so it's going to be given by uh, voltage across that branch, which is, let's say, if we talk about in terms of um, uh, on primary side, voltage V1 squared divided by RC1, okay, and the copper loss uh, is going to be I square R, which is I1 squared times RE1. If you uh, refer it to secondary side, so it's going to be V2 squared divided by RC2. So you pay attention to if it is a 2, it's a 2 in here. If it's a 1 in here, it's a 1 in here. Similarly, your copper loss is going to be I2 squared RE2. Okay, so that's how you determine the two losses. Uh, let's have a look at this uh, example, which is uh, uh, for the transformer of our previous example, which we have... Uh, Look at for driving the equivalent circuit, we have to calculate the voltage regulation and the efficiency of the transformer supplies uh, uh, 10 kVA, 220 volts load, whose power factor is 0.85 lagging. So first of all, what is the meaning of the, uh, the power factor? Power factor mean, uh, is uh, gives you an angle between V2 and uh, I2. So these two are the load voltages and the load current. So power factor gives you an angle by which... Uh, uh, the phase difference between V2 and I2. So 0.85, you can calculate an angle from there because power factor is basically your cos theta. So power factor of 0.85 means this. Lagging means your current I2 is going to be lagging behind by the voltage. So if your voltage V2 is here, your current will be lagging by an angle. So this is going to be your theta. So you can determine theta equals to cos uh, inverse uh, uh, 0.85 okay so that's going to give you this theta so that's about the the, the power factor uh, stuff 
Let's see how we can calculate the voltage regulation. So for voltage regulation, we only need this much of the circuit, right? We don't need this part. So this part could be ignored. So you can see that if you just erase this part from here, whatever you're left with, uh, that's going to be good for you to work with. And V2 is your uh, low voltage side. So the rated voltage on low voltage side is uh, 220 volt. That's from the information. So that means what you're doing is you're calculating V1 over A and then you're finding the difference and you're dividing by V2 and that's going to be your voltage regulation. So your V1 over A will be equal to V2 plus any drop across this branch, which is going to be I2 times its uh, impedance. So impedance is going to be resistance plus uh, the reactance. So, and of course, you have to consider their phase uh, as well as uh, their amplitude. Okay, so V2 is 220 volt. I2, uh, we don't know its value. We don't know its uh, uh, phase yet. So let's see what information we're given and how we can find that. So we're given that the transformer supplies a 10 kVA. So that means we're given S2. That's given as 10 kVA. Okay, and we can calculate I2 from there. So I2 is going to be given by uh, 10 kVA divided by the voltage, which is 220 volt. So that's going to give you a number. So this comes to 45.45 in terms of amplitude and its angle, if you want to put it in phasor form, so its angle is the theta, so uh, theta in here, cos inverse 0.85, and that comes as uh, 31.7. So this theta comes as 31.7 degrees. But let's say this V2 is 0, so if you have to write I2 with an angle, it's going to be negative 31.7, because you're, uh, you're going clockwise from the 0 degrees. So here your I2 is going to have an amplitude of 45.45 amps and the angle is going to be negative 31.7 uh, in uh, amps of course with respect to your voltage v2 which is 220 and an angle of zero degrees in volts so now you know v2 and i2 both okay so we you know v2 you know i2 you know re2 you know xc2 so you can substitute all of them and then you're going to get va over uh, a so let's see what it is. VA, V1 over A equals to 220 plus your I2 as a, so a big bracket in here, 45.45, angle negative 31.7, a small bracket, times another bracket RE2 uh, plus JXE2 converted to your uh, polar value, so you can write it as it is uh, uh, first, 0 0.1038 plus J 0 0.3129, but of course if you have to multiply these two quantities, you have to convert it to polar. So you do the calculation and it uh, brings the result to 231.7 at an angle of 24 degrees and of course it is in volts. And now you can calculate your voltage regulation. So your voltage regulation equals to V1 over A, and that's the amplitude as 231.7 minus the uh, voltage at the uh, full load, which is your rated voltage, 220 volts, divided by your rated voltage, again the full load voltage times 100%. Uh, so this brings you to 5.3%. So what does this mean is V1 must be set to a value which is 5.31 percent larger than its rated value of 2200 volts to ensure that the mentioned load is energized at the secondary uh, with a 220 volts value. So that's about voltage regulation. Now let's have a look for the efficiency. So for efficiency we know that efficiency equals to P output divided by P output plus core losses plus copper loss, right? So your P output uh, is the active power, which you can calculate uh, from your 10 kVA times uh, uh, the 
power factor. So it's basically equal to uh, f t cos theta. So if you go to this triangle, this is a c and the and your q and this is your f t, right? And this is your theta. So your p is basically f times cos theta. So that gives you 85 uh, hundred watts or 8.5 uh, kilowatts. Your output. For the losses, the copper loss equals to I2 square R E2. So I2 is the known to us, which we have just calculated, 45.45 square times R E2 is calculated as uh, 0 0.1038. And this gives you the copper loss of 213.9 watts. The core loss is basically based on RC. So it's given by B, um, um, B2 prime, because uh, sorry, V1 prime, because we are looking at uh, to the secondary, ref referring to the secondary site now. Okay, so this is your B2 actually, because here you have RC2. So it's going to be your uh, V2, V2 square, V2 square. But we, it, this V2 is not 220 volts, okay? This V2 is not 220 volts. Because what we are looking at is, if you go back to the diagram, um, where was that in here? So if you are looking for RC, let's uh, erase uh, this part in here and let's bring back what we have in the picture. Uh, so here, this branch, the voltage across this branch is not V2. The voltage across this branch is V1 over A. So that means if we are looking for um, the calculation of anything, any power which is related to this uh, resistance in here, we're looking for the corresponding voltage across it. And the corresponding voltage across it is V1 over A. So that means your core loss is going to be V1 over A square divided by RC2. Uh, so this is this V2 is not equals to 220 volt. Okay, it's not equals to 220 volts. Okay, so so I remember what we have calculated V1 as, so we calculated it as 231.7. Uh, and your RC2 uh, from your equivalent circuit is 484. And that's going to give you 110.9. So that's your copper loss. So you have all the losses. You have the output power. So your efficiency is uh, 8,500 watts divided by 8,500 watts plus uh, uh, your uh, copper loss, 213.9 plus the core losses, 110.9. So this everything in brackets. So your efficiency goes to... 96.3%.